Hey friends, today I'm going to unpack how imagination today can change your future. And I don't mean daydreaming, wishful thinking, fantasizing. I mean something that you can implement today and it can change the way you live your life tomorrow. Headspace is all about that. It's all about your headspace today will define your life space tomorrow. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Subscribe, share this with other people. Let's go. Look, I'm not a fan at all of New Age philosophy, manifesting your future. Most of these philosophies are harmful, self-seeking, all of that stuff. They don't work. Uh, there's all kinds of things wrong with those philosophies. Having said that, there's a lot to be said about the power of imagination and dedicating some time on a regular basis to imagine and think and contemplate and express those things. Now. Let me give you a scripture in the Bible that talks about that. And I believe we don't quote it enough because it's just scary. This is the words of Jesus in Mark 11, 24. It says, therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Now, that scripture makes me uncomfortable because I can ask all kinds of things. I can imagine all kinds of things that I want that I would ask in prayer. And it's almost blasphemous to me, it feels that way, to ask for something with such boldness and confidence that I can believe in it as if I have already received it. But those are the words of Scripture. So there's something there that Jesus is trying to impress upon us. So beyond the supernatural, which is obviously beyond our control, but it's amazing and scary and miraculous and things like that happen all the time. I really believe in the supernatural, obviously. How can we make this practical, applicable today? I will unpack this for you. So first is this, bold imagination. Bold imagination. A practice of bold imagination is imagining on a regular basis, hopefully even better if it's daily in a, almost like a habit that you have. Something that is beyond what you can imagine normally, right? Beyond your reach. It's like in the one percentile of probability, not something that is completely off even sort of your radar. For example, I can't imagine, I'm not gonna boldly imagine myself being a, an Ethiopian marathon runner for obvious reasons. But if I have a dream of doing something special, doing something big or doing something small but specific or reaching these people or serving in that particular way, I can imagine things boldly. Right? But you have to take the space and the time in your mind, in your heart, in time even, right, to do this on a regular basis and it changes the way you think. So I will uh, give you an example. In my 20s, this is one of the big ones early on, right? In my 20s, I wanted to be a musician. The chances of a musician becoming an actual professional musician who does well, they're very low. And at the time I had no songs, no money, no producer, no demos. Um, and yet I was imagining very often, I had this practice, imagining playing a sports arena. Two years later, I was playing a sports arena. Now, I don't think it was, it, it would have happened honestly with even with opportunity, even with talent, even with sort of luck, it wouldn't have happened if I had focused mostly on reacting to the present day needs or the present day um, sort of realities of life, right? Because my mind wouldn't even go there in the first place. And then what happens is if you, you start practicing bold imagination, it triggers bold action. And if, you're, if you have triggered bold action, if you went beyond the thinking, which is key here, right? Bold imagination, bold action. That is when th things start shifting, tr just re remarkably. So for me, I was networking, I was meeting people, I was trying to write some stuff, and then the bold action was I met with a, with a record executive. He actually just, you know, at a party at a mixer, came over and says, do you sing, do you, you, know, you look like you could be an entertainer? And I said, yeah, and he goes, who will write the songs? I said, yeah, me, uh, who would write the lyrics? Me. Um, okay, come over to the studio and check this out. I've told this story before in other episodes, but the, the, the bold action was I basically said, I will write the songs, I will write the lyrics, and I haven't done any of that uh, until that conversation took place. And now, now I'm on the hook. Now I need to write something special. And I went home and I wrote something special. It just happened, right? So bold imagination, bold action, 
it starts creating the synergy, this energy, and it forces something new. Because now it becomes from a fantasy, it turns into a very slim, but a reality. And when you start getting excited about this, you start thinking, imagining in more detail. So it's not this broad thing, but it's a specific thing. The nuances of the thing that you're imagining, right? Um, what are the people that you're serving? How much money are you going to make? What is, gonna, uh, what is that going to do to your um, sort of your opportunities or to your family life or to romance? And you start imagining all the angles. And when you start imagining all the angles, guess what happens? You start savoring it in advance. And I think the scripture is telling that. It's saying, say it as if you've already received it. Say it with gratitude and it's not even here yet, right? When you start feeling something, and that's the key here, human beings act out of the heart and then the mind rationalizes. We think that we think about it, then we act. It's not true at all. We think out of our emotional self and then our mind explains why our actions are a certain way. So once you go from bold imagination to bold action, you start bold and detailed imagination. You start seeing nuance in, in, in the picture of the future. You start feeling something. You start savoring it in advance. And that is when things explode in advance. There's a book that I read that actually confirms that. And it's by this author, Sunil Gupta. It's called Backable. And it's a book about startup investors and startup founders and the relationship between the two. And what makes a startup founder backable, investable, right? In other words. And of course, this is what we do a lot in our business in Third Drive. Um, so I was very curious about it. And Sunil Gupta does this, does this sweeping analysis of why investors took action on a founder and believed and gave millions or, or her millions of dollars to do what, what they envisioned in their imagination, right? Um, and he lands on something very surprising. He basically says, you know what? The most common trait of founders that were backable is that they had conviction. That's the common, it's not the level of education, their expertise, their track record, it's that they had this deep conviction. And I translate that into somebody who has lived a life of bold imagination and has transitioned from step to step to step, from bold imagination to bold action, to detailed imagination, to feeling and emotion, all of that together is conviction. So you speak to someone about your dream and they believe you, right? And they give you millions of dollars to do it, what, it, what you imagined t you would do to benefit humanity. Now, what is it for you, right? Is it a new career, a spiritual goal, romance, a radical shift in lifestyle, you can develop a daily practice of imagination. And what I would do is I would just spend some time in the Christian world, you call it quiet time, right? You sit, sit down and you pray and you think and you read and you journal. And if you include in your quiet time, a time for imagination, bold imagination, and if you do it regularly, I think it most likely than not will sort of graduate, upgrade to bold action. And then you're on the hook. Then you're in the midst of creating your dream uh, as you go forward. And you keep doing it and keep doing it. And then it goes into much detail. It's much more nuanced. And then your emotions catch up and then other people find out and you have this community supporting you. I think that's the practical aspect of this. Uh, and it is transformative. It may feel a little fluffy, a, a little bit along the lines of fantasy, wishful thinking, and I don't think it's, it's what it is. As a matter of fact, people that are most successful are people who can imagine the future differently, more regularly, with more connection to the emotional self and connection to real life. And if you develop a practice like that, you're immediately going to be in sort of in the in the 1% of advantage because most people live a reactive life most people don't live a life of bold imagination i'll give you two more examples from the creative world i was talking to a friend of mine a few years ago probably a decade ago he's a friend of mine a grammy award winning producer artist pianist uh, his name is george duke
So this guy, of course, he's a giant in music, a legend. And I asked him this question. I said, you know, you've worked with Michael Jackson and a long list of other people, Al Jarreau, all, all kinds of people. Um, what is maybe a common trait that you can think of um, that will would help you predict that this person is going to go big, this, guy, this person is going to be a superstar? And I was expecting something along the lines of hard work, uh, you know, great talent, you know, something sort of cliche, to be honest with you. And he surprised me with his answer because he said, you know, I think the common trait that I see in all the people that I work with that, that became superstars is that they could imagine themselves being successful. And that took me aback, and I remember that when I was preparing for this, going, that is imagination. That's an active, bold practice of imagination. I could see, you, you know, most of those artists can see themselves. Rochelle Farrell, Anita Baker, they actually, you know, Denise Williams, Jeffrey Osborne, uh, Miles Davis. Barry Manilow, yeah. all these people that I've worked with and produced, yeah, the singular thing they had, they could see themselves doing it. I'll leave you one more example, one of my favorites, probably my favorite actually. Um, in my 20s, I was single, I was deeply disappointed in my romantic life, and I committed to a new way of doing romance altogether, a, a radical shift from all everything I knew, and I said, okay, I'm going to do it right, I'm not going to mess it up, I'm going to get mentorship, I'm going to be accountable, I'm going to stick to my guns, because this is the way. And it's hard, right? If uh, You get lonely, you lose faith, and it takes sometimes, I mean, it took me four years before I met my wife, Deb. So in the middle of there somewhere, I, as a practice of bold imagination, I wrote a song. I wrote a song to the woman that I haven't met yet, and it was a love song to her. And um, it really helped me emotionally, I think. It helped with my faith that I'm doing the right thing. And um, on our wedding day, in front of 1,800 of our closest friends, it was a big wedding, we, I sang this song to her. Uh, as part of my ve uh, wedding vows, and it was magical, wonderful, and I, I just, just uh, even thinking about it makes me go, wow, that was pretty special, and it was special to her. So, the reason I gave you this, these different examples and insights, and almost like an, a, a spectrum of evidence that imagination put to practice on a daily basis, on a weekly basis that is followed by bold action, that is followed by emotion. Now you believe in it, now you engage with it, now you go into details and nuance. It can change your life. It can really, really change your life. And a big part of what I do when I help people with, with their life is helping them get in the right headspace. And that's what this channel is all about, exploring the power of that. So thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching this. If you have friends who can benefit from it, forward this link to them. I'll see you next time.